Navigating the insidious illness of Alzheimer's is something nobody asks for. The disease sneaks up on you and your loved one, and it feels like you've been sucker punched in the gut. Then you ask, where do we turn for help? Who do we call? What do we do? These questions and more are what we hope to answer and give you some direction and hope. Now let's join our host, Jeff Edwards. Greetings and welcome. This is Gut Punched Alzheimer's and Caregivers, episode 25. How you doing? Did you have a good week? I hope so. Today on Gut Bunch, Alzheimer's and Caregivers will meet the new executive director of the Dubin Center in Fort Myers, Florida. Her name, Christine Locante. Now, we had a great conversation about what's going on with the Dubin Center. Christine has a very positive and active direction for the future of the center. And we'll also be looking at World Alzheimer's Day, which is September 21st, and that's a week from today. Okay, what are the three rules we follow here at Gut Punch? One, you have to take care of yourself because if something happens to you, who is it going to take care of your loved one? Two, you can't do it alone. You need help. Find a good caregiver's group or network with friends and relatives. And number three, make a list of people, friends, relatives, co-workers who have offered to help you in time of need and then make a list of things you need done but can't do yourself because caregiving duties are overwhelming. Use the lists. Start at the top and keep going till you get what you need done, done. You'll find it very helpful. All very good advice. So are you ready to begin? Okay, let's get started. Our guest today is Christine Lacante, the new executive director of the Dubin Center in Fort Myers, Florida. Now, Christine took over the position in July, coming from United Way of Lee, Hendry, and Glades County, where she served as manager of the Volunteer Center. She's a Florida girl. That's right, born and raised. She holds a master's degree in social impact and organizational leadership. She has dedicated her career to enhancing the quality of life in Southwest Florida. With a background in prevention, advocacy, and dementia-related disorders, Christine is passionate about making every moment matter for those she serves. I'm on the phone with Christine Lacante, Executive Director of the Dubin Center, and she's been there since July of 2024. How are you doing today, Christine? I am doing great. Thanks for having me today. Give us a little background. Uh, where'd you come from? Uh, not far. I'm actually a native to Florida. I was born in Hollywood, a couple hours across the way there, and I moved to Cape Coral when I was two. Wow. Okay. So you grew up I, here. I did, yeah. I mean, you don't meet too many of us. My father actually moved to Cape Coral with his family from Canada when he was 13 years old. Whoa, that's so a big change. been around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, where did you go to school? I went, all the, all of my grade school has been in Cape Coral, so Pelican Elementary, Golf Middle, and Mariner High School. And then I earned my associates at what used to be Edison State College, and now it's Florida Southwestern. I went to an online program for my bachelor's in sociology out of Columbia College in Missouri, and then a hybrid program out of California for my master's in social impact. How did you become interested in memory care? So when I was growing up, my mom actually worked with residents in memory care. And I used to go to work with her and volunteer as a kid. And then right after high school, I became a certified nursing assistant doing my clinicals right at the original Shady Rest. And then worked on a memory care floor at Gulf Coast Village. I eventually ran a memory care for Five Star Senior Living. And then here I am with the Dubin Center. I paused in between. I did some very other important work, uh, like raising my children and violence prevention work with our local certified domestic violence center act. But during that entire time, I was always involved with Alzheimer's in some way, either volunteering or impacted my own family as well. So my Nana, 
had Alzheimer's. I got you. And what brought you to the Dubin Center? I mean, you probably know yeah, about was, it for all these years you've been here. So right, I, here. I, I was always connected United Way somehow, and in previous work that I've done because of partner agencies. And the Dubin Center is one of the partner agencies. I ran the volunteer center with United Way, and I people calling to, you know, ask to get connected to the Dubin Center. And it was honestly a happy accident when I found out that they were looking for new leadership. And it really just feels like home. Like I've been able to use all my experience, my skills, everything is just kind of like it all came home. What's your vision for the Dubin Center for the present and then for the future? So my vision for the Dubin Center is really, first and foremost, it's about community awareness. Of course, being a nonprofit, we are always looking for financial support. But if people don't know about us, then they're not going to know that they can support us. And, you know, this area has a growing number of people moving into it on a daily basis. And a lot of those individuals are here to retire and they're an aging population. And right now we have some pretty high statistics of people that have been affected with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. And so we just need to really get that word out. People need to know that we are here. My aunt and my nana lived in Hollywood, Florida, and they were not familiar with any type of service agencies that could have been very beneficial to them. And I just think it's a it's a very helpful resource and it can make a difficult time a little bit easier. Sure. So that's my my first goal is to just be out there, be known a little bit more. Okay. I know that they did a joint public service campaign with NBC too. I thought that was really a good idea. It's another way to reach out to the community. Like you said, you gotta let more people know about it. Exactly. And we're growing too, and and we're looking at different creative ways to really meet people where they are. I know that you're familiar with our online formats of our our Zoom education and support groups too, because of those individuals that do still travel seasonally, they're able to continue doing so without taking a pause from getting the support that they need. So we do have people that access our, our Zoom courses and support groups from their other neighboring states where they go when we get a little warm here. Yeah. And this is a unique situation for the Dubin Center because I don't know if any other ones like it, at least in the state of Florida. I had somebody from New York said to me, well, talking about Southwest Florida and you're talking about this Dubin Center, what if we don't have one? Well, that's a tough one. I don't know. You know, you have to research what's available and if and if you don't have one, why not start one and call it something else? But the ability to help and serve the people that need it is phenomenal. It really is. People go, why keep talking about the Dubit Center? That's the best thing since sliced bread for me. Mm-hmm. When I had to go through it, I'm still going through it. But initially, that's where I went the very first day after the diagnosis. And everything I got from there was phenomenal. The people were great. And I go into meetings and took this class and that class and this class. But I've started going back because I still need that education. I still need that connection and a camaraderie of people who are going through it. It's been a really unique place. I mean, I have nothing but high praise for it. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. I think that that first call, the first visit, first attendance is always the, the most challenging I think once you you get the courage to take those first steps, then you definitely feel better when you leave. Mm -hmm. I like seeing people leave with smiles on their face and having a little bit of hope. My work in memory care and even personally with my grandmother, I was able to find something that a friend of mine coined a beautiful pain, right? Change in this sense is very painful when you're watching a loved one not be able to do the same things that they could once upon a time. But having the ability to meet them where they are on a daily basis, on a moment to moment basis, it's almost like like a mindful meditation. It makes us stop and appreciate those individual moments. And it really is beautiful to see what people still can do, what they still do remember, what they still do value and appreciate and enjoy. 
And I would not trade those moments for anything. Is the center still offering many different courses for caregivers? Is that something that's going to stay? Yeah, we had all different types of courses. We have the support groups. We have support groups that are specific to men. We have support groups that are specific for different types of dementia. We're going to be increasing those. We offer them again on Zoom and in person and different areas throughout the Lee County. We're also branching out into Charlotte County because it was brought to our attention that they do not have services for seniors in general. And this is just one of those big gaps. And we were asked to help fill it. And how can you say no, right? Right, Um, right. So that's increasing. And then we're going to be starting up some educational workshops that are going to be happening on a monthly basis because we know that there are some topics that are more geared towards education, but not as part of the classes. And we don't want to take up support time. That support group time is in many cases, the only time that the caregiver really has for self-care, and we don't want to interrupt that by talking about other very important topics. So we'll be able to focus a little bit more on some other things. We're going to start off with that in November. We partner with United Way for a program called Reunite, and it speeds up the reunification process if a person goes missing. And we know that our families with Alzheimer's and other types of dementia are more prone to wandering. And so this will give us an opportunity to increase that safety. So that's just one example. It's a good one. We just had Jen. Carol Lucy. Carol Lucy. Yes, that's what I heard. That makes me very happy. She's a gem. It's a great program. I signed my wife up a couple of years back. Just got to prepare. So that's kind of 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 you hope you you hope you never need it. Exactly. The more prepared we are, the less that we'll need it. Right. Mm -hmm. Stay prepared. So you never have to get prepared. Just like a hurricane. Exactly. Do you have any plans for major fundraising? I do. So we have two major events that we've done for decades and I'm not going to be the one to come in and take anything that our community is used to having away. But I am going to put my own spin. I am going to put my own little creative glimmer, if you will, starting with the Light to Remember, which is a luminary event that is used to honor someone or in remembrance of someone. And it's taken place at some different areas throughout the community. The last one was at the Bell Tower. We have some very exciting things in the works. We're hoping to have a float in the Edison Festival of Light Parade. So that is in the works right now. And yes, thank you. I hope to line the streets of Cleveland Avenue with people that are just honoring their loved ones and carrying the luminaries. So if anyone wants to be involved with that, we're definitely looking for a trailer and some people that like to build and paint. And of course, people that will purchase a luminary and want to walk aside with us or they can sit in the audience with their, with their luminary. So yeah, Good love idea. to have everyone participate. Good idea. So if anyone is, you know, wanting to join us in that, please give us a call and we can get something set up. And what's your phone number? Our phone number is 239-437-3007. And the website address is? DubingCenter.com. <laughs> you got it. I noticed that the website looks a little different. It's probably a combination, but we are still making changes. I'm going to kind of clean it up just a tad, and we're adding some additional resources. Just make it a little bit easier for people to access what they're looking for. Be a little bit more of a resource for those that may not be able to get to us because of schedules or because... Like you mentioned, they're in a different area. I always plug your website because, again, my feelings for it. Thank you. And then we are um, amping up our social media, too, because social media is where it's at. It's been, you know, it's been here. It's here to stay. And again, meeting people where they are. So we have a social media campaign that started a couple weeks ago with good information. We have what we call a brain booster Mm-hmm. Um, so some sort of a riddle or a puzzle that we post once a week. We have our calendar, kind of like a weekly calendar looking looking, you know, to the week ahead. And then we've changed up our newsletter a little bit too. So instead of having it be a weekly e blast of basically just the calendar, it'll be monthly and it's gonna have a client corner, again, some brain booster information, different stuff, give people a reason to open it. Sure. Um, get us a little bit more connected. So we have that coming up too. Lots of changes yeah. made. We've been busy. 
Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. Are you going to get involved with the Alzheimer's Walk, which uh, I think in Fort Myers is November 15th? I've always been involved with it in some way, shape, or form. So one year I even served on the committee. Mm -hmm. I do think it's very important. Alzheimer's Association has, they've done really well with, with their mission. They're, they're focused on global research. And when we are looking for any kind of information, that's the first place we go because they have it. They have the research. They, they have the resources to do it. They have the resources to maintain that information in a way that is easily accessible. And we appreciate that. So of course, we always want to support them. And of course, we need to be there because we are the boots on the ground in the area. They really aren't. You know, they don't have offices here. So wherever they are, we have to kind of be there to let participants know that, yes, Alzheimer's Association is there. You can absolutely reach out to them. But if you need more than that, if you need actual services, if you need support because you're actively going through it with your family, with a loved one, we're here for you as well. That's good to know. It's kind of the difference between what you do and what they do. Exactly. I understand at one time they used to have local offices, but they have since gone away. You can reach out to them. And then I agree with you too. They're a great resource. I do a lot of my own research from there. I found a couple other places that I utilize too. And if I can get it and share it because I know how to do that, then that's what I'll do. I don't know everything, but I'm learning. And I have to be careful with what I say, but everything I do, I will source. And, mm -hmm. and, and you have to. Yes. And, and that's the thing is that with um, all the newest studies, I mean, I listen to your podcasts and you're always sharing the new studies and information that's out there. We don't have time to be able to conduct those studies. We don't have the resources to do that. Right. Alzheimer's Association is doing a fabulous job doing it. So we're here to support them. And I think they're here to support us. So it's a great collaboration. It is. Now, what would you like the listeners to know about the Dubin Center? The Dubin Center is here to make your journey with your loved one a little bit easier. From a standpoint of our clients, the information we hear from them is that they just wish that they would have reached out sooner because it's one more day or one more month or one more year that it would have been easier. And I think that that's the biggest thing is that sure you could, you could do it on your own, but you don't have to. Right. And that's, that's very important. And our services are, are free to our clients. Our clients don't pay. Of course, sometimes they donate or they support in other ways, but we don't charge for any of our services. We're a community resource. We're accessible to everyone. How could people donate or help support? Yeah. So support in, in different ways, of course, getting the word out, join, uh, follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, so that your friends, your connections are able to find out about us. Sometimes social media is easier than making a phone call or stepping foot in that physical appearance. So it's little baby steps, which works out well. We have a donate button on our website. So you're happy to make a contribution. Something that we have seen more lately is that in lieu of flowers, people are asking for a donation to be made in remembrance or in honor of a person that has recently passed. And that's always a great way to show support as well. World Alzheimer's Day is coming up the 21st, which is a Saturday. We are doing a little bit of a social media campaign and we will be asking for people to donate. Why do you support us? Think about that. What is your reason for supporting the Dubin Center? in any way that you do, that's the reason to give. So we are working on that as well. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your time today. I know you're busy. I wish you the most success in doing what you're doing. It's going in the right direction with all changes and, and getting people to find out about it. Keep on plugging. It'll get there. It'll grow. Let's put it this way. It's a lifesaver for mm -hmm. people yes. who need you. Yes. In, more ways, you. in yes. more ways than one, really. It's not just the individual. It, it's the family. Continued success. Thank you very much. We'll be right back to Gut Punched, Alzheimer's and caregivers. Are you the caregiver for someone living with dementia? You're not alone. The Dubin Center in Fort Myers offers free educational classes and support. The Dubin Center has given me a shoulder to lean on. Call today or visit us at dubincenter.com to learn more. This is Gut Punched, Alzheimer's and caregivers. We'd like to thank Christine Lacante for her time today and letting us know more about the Dubin Center. 
You know, I get asked a lot about why we talk about the Dubin Center so much. Well, for me, it's personal. When I was faced with my wife's diagnosis, I was introduced to the center. It was the first place I went, and the help and the resources they provided me was outstanding. It was my lifesaver in many ways. And they continue to help anyone and everyone that needs hope and direction. Now, not every town or city has a Dubin Center. I get it. So why not? Why not look at starting something like it? If your community needs it, start small and local. It's just a thought. Now, the information I'm talking about now comes from the Alzheimer's Association website. It's got a lot of information. It's easy to find, alz.org. World Alzheimer's Day, which takes place every September 21st, is a global effort to raise awareness and challenge the stigma around Alzheimer's disease and other dementia. Join the Alzheimer's Association as they recognize the more than 55 million people across the world who are affected by this terrible disease. Whether you fundraise for the cause, share information about Alzheimer's, or talk to a loved one about dementia, you can make a difference. And this World Alzheimer's Day marks a historic era in the fight against Alzheimer's. They now have traditionally approved treatments to slow Alzheimer's in the early stages. But there is much more work to do. Day by day, they're making real progress for families facing the disease. I can't stop now. Give today to be part of the next treatment breakthrough. Here's some facts and figures. One in three older adults dies with Alzheimer's or another dementia. It kills more than breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. Share the facts. Join the fight. Get involved on World Alzheimer's Day. Walk to end Alzheimer's. Register for a walk near you to raise funds and awareness for Alzheimer's care, support, and research. And you can volunteer. No matter your time or expertise, you can make a difference for people facing Alzheimer's and dementia. Tell your story, post on social media, and let the world know that you're part of the fight to end Alzheimer's using hashtag E-N-D-A-L-Z. That's end alls. The Alzheimer's Association leads the way to end Alzheimer's and all other dementia by accelerating global research, driving risk reduction and early detection, and maximizing quality care and support. They accelerate global research to discover new methods of treatment, prevention, and ultimately, a cure. They advocate for funding and people-first policies that propel research and address the Alzheimer's crisis. They work in all communities to provide care, support, and resources so that no one has to face this disease alone. Find your local chapter. We'll be right back to Gut Punched, Alzheimer's and Caregivers. My grandmother had Alzheimer's, and I remember we were all in the hospital room, and for like 10 seconds, she recognized who we were, and then it was gone. So it's like a thief. It's taking away memories and um, who you are as a person. Over five and a half million Americans have Alzheimer's. That number may double by 2050. For more information, visit rightfocus.org. This is Cut Punched, Alzheimer's and Caregivers. Our plan for the next episode is to connect with our friend from NRPC, Amy Shank. We'll discuss early detection of Alzheimer's and how to know when it's time to get yourself or your loved one tested. And if it's not Alzheimer's, what are some of the other reasons people may have memory issues? We hope that if you know someone who has a family member or friends who are dealing with a loved one who has Alzheimer's or any other type of dementia, that you would let them know about this podcast. For more information, you can check out the Alzheimer's Support Network at alzsupport.org backslash about dash us or the Dubin Center. That's dubincenter.com. And to find your local chapter of the Alzheimer's Association, you can visit alz.org. Local resources. Find your local chapter. It's pretty easy. Now, if you haven't already, we ask that you check out our new website. Yes, tell us what you think. Let us know where you listen to the podcast and what state you're in. We would really appreciate that. We've heard from people in South Carolina, Baltimore, Virginia, New York, Tennessee, Louisiana. The website is gutpunched.com. And the email address is gutpunchedac at outlook.com. Or we have a new one, jeff at gutpunched.com. If you own a business... 
and would like to be part of our website or podcast, let us know. A special shout out to Rick Peterson, Aura Santana, Gentry Thomas, Dan Moser, Sheila Book, the Dubin Center, and of course, my wife for their tremendous help and support in making this podcast possible. Thanks for joining us and please come back again for more. God bless. This has been Gut Punched, Alzheimer's and Caregivers with your host, Jeff Edwards. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to us on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple, Pandora, and more. If you have a question or you want to get in touch, our email is gutpunchedac at outlook.com. Or you can visit our website at gutpunched.com.